From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Max Lancer, Johnny. DA's office. How is she? Pretty weak. The hospital staff are doing all they can for her, but they don't give her much hope. Has she been able to talk? No, not yet. Maybe not ever. It was ground glass, all right. The doctor's sure of it now. The same as her husband. Why, Johnny? Why her? I'll guess with you. Maybe she figured we were closing in on her, that the game was over and took this way out. We had nothing on her, Max. Suspicion, that's all we were going on. She'd had two husbands in the last three years. Both of them died from the effects of ground glass poisoning. And both times she goes for $50,000 insurance. That's all we had to go on, and it wasn't enough. But maybe she didn't realize that. I can give you a better theory. Okay, sound off. Somebody tried to murder her. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Chicago... To the home office, Northwestern Surety Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Lonely Hearts Matter. Expense account, final page. Item 15, $2.60. Sandwiches, cigarettes, and incidentals, which I had sent up from a lunchroom across the street from the hospital. It was evening again now. I'd spent the whole day in the lounge down the hall from the room where Mabel Burke Wells was fighting for her life. Fighting and slowly losing. I'd tagged her as a murderess responsible for the deaths of two of her husbands. But then she herself had been struck down by the same poison. And now only she had the key to the puzzle. A key she might never give up. Calling Dr. Kenworthy. Dr. Kenworthy. Dollar? Hmm. The room. Oh, hiya, Creeley. Dr. Any change Kenworthy. yet in my aunt's condition? No. No, I just talked to the doctor. If anything, she's even weaker. She didn't even recognize me. I've been in the room off and on all day. She didn't even know I was there. Well, she's in pretty bad shape. Sit down. You look a little rocky yourself. Thanks. I feel that way. Aunt Mabel's been a real mother to me. This is quite a shock. Yes, I imagine. Doctor says it's the same thing that killed Jonathan. Yes, that's right. Well, that just doesn't make any sense, Mr. Dollar. Say, tell me something. Did anyone come to the house to see your aunt? Either last night after Lancer left or this morning before I got there? And as far as I know, why do you think someone might have? I don't know. She'd already gone to bed when I came in last night. I left early this morning. It's possible, of course, but I don't believe anyone did. She never had any visitors. She's always been a lonely person, actually. Maybe that's why she started the Lonely Hearts Club. Yes, it was. I suggested the idea to her as a way to meet friends and be around people and... She loved it. Why couldn't she and Jonathan's daughter, Norma Wells, get along? Ah, she's a strange girl. Always had a chip on her shoulder. I spoke to Jonathan about it once, but he just laughed it off. He said Norma just had too much possessiveness. Yeah, well, I guess it's natural. The two of them had been alone a long time until he married your aunt. Mr. Dollar. Yeah? Well, the police think that Aunt Mabel killed him, don't they? They've got some pretty strong reasons for thinking so. And the way she is now, dying in her, I suppose they think she did it herself? It's possible she did. Is that what you think? Oh, I'm not sure I am. Oh, come on over, Miss Wells. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt. Just making conversation. You two know each other, I guess. Yes. Well, I think I'll get on a cup of coffee. See you later, Doctor. I can't stand that man. So I gather. How is she? Not much change. Couldn't bear just sitting in that hotel room wondering what was happening. She hasn't been able to talk? No, not yet. I don't understand it. My father died less than two hours after he was first stricken. Difference in constitution, maybe. Different dosage. She's too mean to die. She's... I'm sorry I said that. It was cruel and heartless, but that's the way I feel. I, I can't help it. When I think of my father, so kind and gentle, murdered in cold blood by that woman... If she did do it, then why this? You mean the same thing happening to her? That's right. Remorse, maybe. 
if she's capable of it. Or fear. I don't know why. Maybe she's insane. I've always thought she might be. Oh, she's sane, all right. As sane as any of us. And what do you think happened to her? <sighs> oh, I don't know. We probably never will know. She'll die without talking, and, and there'll never be any proof. That's a possibility. That, that worthless nephew of hers will collect the insurance, I suppose. That's not my department. But under the circumstances, I think he'd have a legal claim. It's, it's horrible. Mr. Dollar. What is it, nurse? She's conscious, and she wants to see you. She was a dying woman. I could see it the moment Norma Wells and I walked into the room. I sent the nurse to find her nephew, Burton Creeley, and he slipped in quietly a few seconds later. The old lady lay back on her pillows, smiling to herself as usual, bright-eyed with a last burst of false vitality. Death was only minutes away. All of us knew it, and she knew it too. My gracious. All of you look so serious. But it was nice of you to come. It keeps a body from feeling lonesome. You save your strength now, Mrs. Wells. What on earth for? Body can't enjoy the last few breaths. Might as well not be living. Please, Aunt Mabel, let's... Don't you please me, Burton Creeley. Straighten your tie. You look a fright. My, certainly nice to see you here, Norma. I... Well, I... I, I just... always said to Jonathan, it's just a crying shame that Norma and me can't hit it off better. <laughs> he just laughed and... Mrs. Said, Wells. Oh, be quiet, young man. I know what you're after. All in due time. As a matter of fact, that's why I wanted to see you. I've been in my senses for the last hour, but I just didn't let on. I wanted a chance to think. I'm about to die, you know. Aunt Mabel, don't talk that way. Oh, simmer down, Burton. Death is only the doorway to a more glorious life. You remember that. <sighs> Mr. Dollar. I didn't do it. I know. I finally came to that conclusion myself, too late. You mean you're not surprised? No. Well, at least it's a help that I don't have to convince you. I'm afraid I won't have that much time. What are you saying? You heard me, Norma. I said I didn't kill Jonathan. Oh, I was much too fond of him to do a thing like that. Who did kill him, Mrs. Wells? That's what I was puzzling over for the last hour. Then, when I figured it out, I had to decide whether to let sleeping dogs lie or see that justice took its course. And I... I... Easy now. <laughs> but I remembered how kind Jonathan had been and decided to... Aunt Mabel, don't, don't try to talk anymore. Those chocolates, Burton, that you gave me this morning. Oh, that was an awful naughty thing to do, Burton. And now you have to be punished for it. Wait a minute, Mrs. Wells. And Jonathan. Walter, too. Yeah, they were always so nice to you. I just can't understand why you did it. Mr. Dollar. Yes? You take Burton in hand. Give him... Give him a good talking to. Explain to him that... Mrs. Wells. That he... He must go... Around. Is she... Yeah. Well, Creeley... Get your hands up, Dollar. Huh? One move from you and Norma gets a bullet right in the back. Let go of me! Into the closet, Dollar. Don't go be on. a fool, Creeley. Hurry up. Oh. Go on. Now, remember one thing, Dollar. I'm taking Miss High and Mighty here along. If they get me, then she goes, too. The door was solid, built to last. It took me several minutes to smash it open. The nurse in the corridor said Creeley and Norma Wells had gone down in the elevator. I grabbed the floor phone and called the main desk in the lobby. They said some man and a girl had just stolen an ambulance from the emergency driveway and headed west onto the Lakeshore Parkway. And at that moment, Max Lancer stepped off the elevator. Johnny, what's going on? Back to your car, Max. Come on. 
We could hear the ambulance siren for a while somewhere up ahead of us, then we lost it. Max kept the red light flashing and the accelerator on the floorboard. The speedometer needle edge past 85, touched 90, and hung there. We were nine miles up the parkway when I saw it. Parked cars, a crowd gathering, and the ambulance rolled over against the bank. Where are they? A man in the curl got out of it. They ran into the brush there. He's carrying a gun. Take the east side, Johnny. I'll go around the other way. Right, Max. And watch yourself. The undergrowth was heavy. A mass of dark shadows slashed here and there by beams of light from the headlamps of the cars on the road above. Max disappeared into the night, and I moved on alone. Minutes passed. Then a car light shifted slightly, and I saw them, only a few yards away, crouched against a tree. He was holding the gun pressed against his side. Hold it, Dollar. You're finished, Creeley. You'd better give up. You know what I told you. If I go, she goes. Johnny, he's going to kill me. I was holding my gun at my side, but I didn't dare lift it, try to aim it. One false move on my part, and he pulled the trigger, blast the life out of Norma Wells. Then she struggled slightly, tried to pull away from him. I had a one-second chance, and I took it. Ah! Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I'm all right. Yes. I didn't have time to call the shot. I had to get it off fast. Yeah. Looks like it caught him in the heart. Expense account item 16, $231.25. Hotel and incidentals in Chicago and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $416.40. End of account, end of report. Remarks? A heart with a bullet hole in it. There's a real lonely heart. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, the Callicles matter, which is just another way of saying the Greeks had a word for it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Lucille Meredith, Mary Jane Croft, Virginia Gregg, Herb Ellis, Howard McNear, and Stacey Harris. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.